Next up is Emiliano Gutierrez. He does some farming also, but it's a little different type of farming. It's uh, land-based farming, vertical farming, in fact. Um, and so uh, I met Emiliano uh, uh, at East Denver. Uh, he was a panelist there and uh, at the uh, Climate Summit. Um, and uh, I'll turn it over to you, Emiliano. I think you're still on mute, but I'll let you unmute and uh, present to everyone. And uh, then we'll uh, take some questions after after he's done presenting. You can you can put questions in the chat during the presentation. You can raise your hand, but uh, you know let's let uh, you know a little bit of a presentation before we jump right into the questions. Great. Hi everyone. Thank you, Matt. Pleasure to be here. Thanks, Stephanie, for for the inspiring presentation. Um, indeed, we're we're going to speak about vertical farming, urban regeneration and just how technology can help us um, be more human and blend more with nature and, and protect earth in a way uh, i think also in in honor of earth day that's what we should also be be thinking about so um, leveraging technology for people and planet that being said i'll go ahead and share my screen please do confirm if that's visible It is, thank you. Perfect. So, raíz means root, <laughs> root in Spanish and, and in Portuguese. And we see the root as, as, as the healing point, but also the, the, the first thing to grow uh, and, and, and the foundations of a new food system. So, at raíz, we are building the urban farming evolution in a manner that allows us to grow more consciously and more accessible for generations to come. We all know that climate change uh, is making it hard to feed the people and feed the planet um, all the way from arable land loss, extreme weather events and droughts. We need to rethink the way we are connecting with our food all the way from um, leafy greens, wheat uh, and other kinds of food. We need to really have a paradigm shift in terms of what we grow and what we eat and how we grow it. So. At Raiz, we're creating a distributed and resilient food system. We believe that technology can allow us to have climate resilience and be able to not only mm, secure our future food stream, but also make it in a symbiotic way with nature. This is a new product that's coming up on, on our end. We'll share more in a bit, but we envision a world in which communities can grow their own food they can even grow to earn, so make a living out of growing in a, in a sustainable manner and effectively to be able to grow for all. I just recently reconnected or dared to, to reconnect with a, a deeper purpose on my end. And I'm not saying this is a solution, but we do aim to solve world hunger. And what if we can leverage technology to take it to the points that need it the most, not only um, developed countries, but also countries in need. So if we distribute decentralized production and we are able to have these accessible growing systems, we could effectively grow for all and allow uh, communities in need to have that um, steady food. Um, in terms of uh, technological integration, um, and this is just a, a mock-up of something we're developing in, in uh, companionship with uh, Celo. Um, so we are a Web3 refi company merging um, yeah, Web3 and um, in vertical farming. And this is the first approach in terms of allowing, and I think it's uh, to the point you were saying before, Matt, um, how do we allow people worldwide, retail investors, and, and even just uh, um, conscious individuals that what, want to invest in something um, uh, larger than themselves. So what if they could invest in a new vertical farm that's going to be launched in Zimbabwe or Mexico, right? So how do we create these incentive mechanisms for people to invest and enable other people to grow while also earning themselves and having an impact? We'll go more in depth uh, in the future. So what had been done so far and what are we what are we uh, all about so we enable communities to launch their own farms this is um uh, our operating farm in in lisbon um tomorrow we actually have a, an earth day event there and, and and we see this as um of course it's a concept it's our prototype 
but two main things come from from this in terms of how we do things differently. First, um, we do a hybrid energy model. So as you see here, we have both natural light and LEDs, um, but we're also growing with our own microgrid, our, our own um, photovoltaic um, panels. So that allow us to generate um, the energy we need. So we're not, um, yeah. Uh, defeating the purpose by using fossil fuels so that's on one end on the other hand we are building um, an impact protocol and financing protocol, um, which on one hand allows us, allows us to quantify and really make sure that the impact we are generating or aiming to generate is real in terms of how much water we are saving, how much energy we are generating, and how much potential carbon is being avoided from a long supply chain. Um, so that's that's on one end. And then the financing side is uh, lowering the entry barriers. Again, instead of having to pay 50k per farm uh, as you uh, a farm operator or someone that wants to launch their farm um what if we are able to diminish that and just make uh, a thousand different tickets of 50 50 dollars um and that allow us um, to have this co-financing co-ownership mechanism which we see is very powerful and um, also has powerful network effects in terms of expanding the vertical farming network which is in its term uh, modular and scalable so we saw before the modular um, hydroponic system that's going to be the first 3D printed um, biomaterial or bi yeah, biopolymer mm, uh, growing system, but it's meant to be modular. So we can have either like 10 containers um, connected, but also only one farm wall, for example, in a corporate or, or a co-working space. So it's about creating a full network that has synergies with each other and is generating food and impact. So this is what 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 we're doing already: growing fresh greens with optimized yields. Um, uh, the energy bid allows us to have really competitive costs, and um, we're implementing the methodology to do carbon accounting and also have that, um, of course, zero pesticides. So it's how do we grow more with less resources and in a in a more climate resilient manner. It's a bit of the market. We won't go too deep here, but uh, you know, agriculture as a whole is is quite a quite a big industry. And vertical farming is is still is still growing, even though it has had some some hurdles. Uh, it's projected to reach 12 billion as a global industry, and we're starting in Europe, uh, based in Lisbon, and and expanding in Southern Europe to begin with, but also also have a a global approach and, and global scalability. Now we see the food system needs to change. Now uh, we don't have much time, and I think that's why we're all here connected as well. We know that the urgency is there uh, on our side on the food uh, and agriculture angle. We know that, of course, it's 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 good to um, do everything we can to reduce the impact, but we also have to have a climate resilience. So if things come to worse, we need to be prepared. And that's why controlled environment also makes sense. Um, now, decarbonizing the agricultural side is, is a huge financial opportunity as well. And we see that the centralized systems can allow to get us there. I mentioned refi before, regenerative finance and um, working with near and seller protocols. So um, let's jump in to see how, how that um, could look. So again, we're developing a financing and traceability protocol. So why blockchain, right? This is a, a very common question um, because it can unlock liquidity and scalability for us. We see that Liquidity in terms of financing a new farm is one of the biggest hurdles in, in terms of vertical farming, given the capex. So if we decentralize that, we're able to launch there faster. And also scalability, because if we create the right network effects and everyone in the ecosystem is having an ownership of this um, vertical farming network, you as an individual organization client are also um, empowered and incentivized to um, grow that network and attract more clients, attract more uh, people and farm operators. So the vision is here, how, how do we create a flywheel of farm chasers or farm operators are, are using leveraging Raices technology, brand, infrastructure with our partners that have this um, traceability and financing that goes back. So, um, and then we finance more farms, uh, which in turn, of course, are growing food for final customers, restaurants, families, with support of a vibrant community of, of farm hands. I'm going to go step by step here. Um, this is the first angle and the, and the one we're, we're um, going for, uh, as I mentioned, with a little uh, mock-up of the DAP. So we have people that are able to invest through our DAP or platform. Uh, the funding goes to a new vertical farm, so it's per project. Mm, uh, that gives us a, a farm share uh, and that 
allows the, the refi retail investor or institutional as well to have yields and returns. So um, that that's in terms of the, the sales that are um, being generated by, by the vertical farm. And this is on the data collection side. So again, we, we're not just um, providing um, monetary yields, but also impact data. So here uh, we're bringing certain data on chain and that's still being developed. So it's uh, sensors, oracles, and some on chain data. And that basically means that um, what we do in terms of operations within the farm will be registered on chain, which will allow us to have that traceability and credibility. Um, and in the future, be able to plug that into other marketplaces, be water marketplaces, carbon marketplaces. So if we have a digital asset that compounds and integrates, for example, our um, food yield, but also uh, how much energy, uh, clean energy we're generating, how much water we're saving, how much carbon we're avoiding, then that becomes powerful as, a, as an impact asset that can be then commercialized and used as a side revenue stream for um, the vertical farming network and its participants. And lastly, but of course not least, this is the whole point of, of, of what we're doing and growing food for local communities, right? So um, we have here the farms that are that are um, producing food for, for consumers and farmhands that are working at the at the vertical farm. So this is like the whole mm, ecosystem in a way is um, to bring vertical farms uh, on chain, allows us to align incentives uh, to launch more farm, like, again, creating this flywheel effect, um, whereas um, where everyone wants to see more farms, more impact, more profit. We um, trace impact to create value because if it's not traced, not quantified, not digitized, then um, it loses the value, or at least you can't um, create more value out of it. Uh, and then accelerate expansion, right? So again, I, um, we see this Web3 integration as a way to allow us um, to access liquidity and scalability. In terms of where we're at right now, uh, we again launched this um, uh, vertical farm in Lisbon last year. We've we've been getting yeah, hundreds of, of customers, and now uh, are waiting, um, focusing on on restaurants. And we are currently developing these new farm walls that um, we have been seeing quite a bit of of demand, especially in co working spaces, corporate offices, even residential homes. But like we're starting to focus on on those two as we refine the product, and we're able to reach more and more people. Um, and just see this as a as a stepping stone to launching more and more farms in the middle of the city. Um, and we have the, the supply chain secured in terms of uh, container farms, again, with a hybrid energy model that we can launch um, globally. So again, the vision is to have a network of farms uh, adaptable to different cities, different economies, uh, different communities, so all the way from uh, individual scale. And I take the chance to show a bit of the progress here. Um, this is the farm wall which this is very confidential, but I trust you'll, <laughs> you'll keep it here. Um, so we are 3D printing this module. It's a plant-centric design uh, being led by our chief design officer who was previously working with Lego. And the idea here is um, why don't we make it very accessible and very easy to use and uh, adaptable to different sizes, different um, environments as well, right? So really, like even uh, blending it with nature, again, it's biodegradable. And, and I mean, the technology is not uh, there yet, but we do envision and have some serious research done in terms of how can we make it, for example, out of uh, mycelium structure? How do we um, really integrate it with the soil so that it has the advantages of vertical farming in terms of saving water uh, space? Um, and, and yeah, just having that continuous process and, and growth, but really merged with nature because we think that that is the way forward, right? It's not only going to be this technological vertical farming, not only going to be regenerative agriculture. We need both to work in symbiosis. And that's what we are here to do, like merging nature with technology, um, focused on the decentralized angle, uh, again, leveraging technology, uh, um, leveraging uh, clean energy and a hyper energy model. But at the end of the day, like really focusing on that nature integration in terms of um, partnerships and, and for all the people here watching, we, we're um, totally interested in, in establishing more partnerships. We're, we're supported by, by uh, yeah, leading uh, 
people and organizations in, in the refi and vertical farming side. Um, and as, as we progress with our funding round, we see strong interest and, um, uh, yeah, um, let's say commitments on, on the um, refi angle. And we're looking for very um, impact-minded investors. So if anyone would love to chat, we're looking for a co-lead with uh, experience scaling up um, Yes, food tech, not necessarily vertical farming, but yes, uh, distribution channels, scaling the the business side of things. So would be happy to talk. And as a whole, just um, we we see our, our what we're building as a, as a, um, uh, yeah three way regeneration. So it's urban um, regeneration, right? Um, it's uh, agricultural regeneration in, in the way of uh, integrating these new materials, but also starting with the people, right? So that's why we're customer centric, also going to the final customer and making this very visual and uh, something that people can engage with, because we think that is the key for mass adoption of this kinds of technology, really connecting with the people and, and, and focusing on that inner regeneration from the team outwards as well, and in everything we do as a company. So... Thank you very much. Happy to take questions. Awesome. So a uh, couple things. So the session is recorded. So let's talk and see if there's anything you want us to edit out when we uh, when we uh, uh, publicize it more. Oh, good. Um, and have it up on the site. And then also it is it is live streamed and it's also live streamed at uh, oh, good, oh, good, oh, good. Metaverse with uh, Menthol Protocol. So I, I can't Love make mental. any promises in terms of what stays uh, uh, private there, but it looks like you're up to some good stuff. Um, just real quickly, like, would you like, so we have a wide ranging audience, you know, so like I said, there's some people that, you know, very familiar with blockchain and metaverse and, and not that you're doing metaverse, but you know what I'm saying? Web three type of, of uh, technologies. Um, I would describe blockchain to someone who's not familiar with it is it's it's a fancy word for a ledger and it's like an encrypted ledger, and um, yeah. and and if if you you can it has the ability to be de decentralized, which then makes it you know another way of saying there's multiple copies of that ledger with different people, which make it very hard to change the ledger because mm -hmm. you know with one copy changes it. Everyone else says no. You're you're wrong. This is the true copy. Um, so so really, it's 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 something that's been around for a while, and I think sometimes gets a bad name with Bitcoin. Uh, you know, with the energy use. Would you agree with that, Emiliano? Yeah, I think. I mean, there even uh, close friends and family. Like uh, I have this. Mm, mm, uh, let's say bad connotation block. <laughs> on, on on what crypto is right especially if you say tokens and crypto and all, all that but at the end of the day as you said it's a it's a distributed ledger which has uh certain advantages right in terms of um what we can do on on, on my side and, and what i think and what i'm excited about um is the composability angle so what if again you can um plug into mental protocol as you said and congratulations for to the mental team on, on their launch. Um, so if, if you can plug into that ecosystem, that's powerful. If you can plug into uh, renewable energy credits that are being tokenized and leverage that technology to tokenize, for example, uh, your renewable energy assets or the one that we have in the farms, that's powerful. So I think, um, yeah, it's about taking a deep breath and maybe decoupling from the wrong connotation, accept, uh, accepting them, right? Because there's been some uh, wrong stuff done, but it's an evolving process. It's a uh, it's, uh, powerful technology. And I think if done right with the right approach, as I think and feel the refi space is doing, then it can help us um, have a better coordination mechanism and incentive mechanism to scale climate action. Agreed. Thank you very much. And I'm going to roll right into Gautam Shaw. Uh, Internet of Elephants, Gautam, I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, Emiliano, thanks so much.